Hey, suck it here, just giving another update on the Lightning Trapper. I'm going to run some Guardians, but I've done quite a lot with the character now. I'm basically just setting stuff up for doing Uber Elder. Um, update save, because I've changed the build a fair amount, and I'll explain why. So, I've dropped the Timeless Jewel that was here. Um, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what, let's just drop it and I'm trying to get a good Maraketh jewel in this part of the skill tree. So the idea is these two points I'm going to drop eventually and then I'm going to root through here. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clusters which get hit by the Maraketh jewel. And then you have easy access to the Frenzy which is a good two pointer for nine um, so you have eight just already, nine very easily, and then you could also take Pierce as well if it, you hit a particularly good node here. You can see there it's got a bit of movement speed, which would be ten, and then that would be purely just if you wanted the thing there. The main thing that you want from the Marrakech thing is it can give flask effects, of which you can see there it has flask charges gained. And there it has flask charges gained as well. Um, so you can gain some flask modifiers, which is very good. You can gain movement speed, you can uh, gain projectile damage. Basically all the things you would want since Lightning Trap is a projectile. So that was my thought process. I got the Maraketh Jewel. And I'm just throwing all of my divines into it, hoping to get something good. Um, otherwise, other changes that I've made to the character. I briefly spoke about maybe playing a Hail Negator setup. Um in the last video. I tried Hail Negator out, it didn't feel that good, um, and I managed to craft this belt, which is a 5 tier 1, 1 tier 3 belt. Uh, this belt is insane for a couple of reasons, so one, it has a lot of life on it with the flat life, percent life. It's got increased life recovery rate. Um, the life recovery rate from Flask is decent, is whatever. My flask heals for quite a lot now because it has the increased life recovery rate and the divine uh, life recovery from flasks. I need to spam divine this eventually, but all my divine's going into the jewel. Um, so with that, I then threw the more of conquest back on. 20% of damage I take, I gain as life. This gets scaled by that. I've got like something like 25% life regen, just like base on this build. Then with all the other stuff on top, uh, once I get rolling, my life just regens really, really quickly. And it uh, just feels really nice. So that was kind of the whole thought process. It was like Maraketh jewels are cool. I have a Maraketh jewel. I have all this life recovery. So I was like, let's just stack as much life as possible. Because the more life I have, the better my life recovery is. Um, so it's just like a synergy thing. So yeah, I lost like 2k ES, gained 1k life. And then I gained a bunch of skill points, which I'm spending to hopefully get something absurd. Like 80% flaff effect. But anyway, that's kind of the goal so from this point um i'm still trying to craft a better pair of gloves for this build i was originally running two socket bubonic trails um but with the belt change i had to drop the bubonics because my resists were all screwed up i would love to put my bubonics back on though because they have the uh, best in slot enchant for this build and farming enchants is really tedious and i don't want to have to farm enchants again um they're also just a very good dps option uh, so there are a lot of damage, and I don't want to do more lab farming. So I'm going to hopefully craft a new pair of trap gloves, um, which will then let me go back to that setup. And uh, that will be AO of the K. Uh, Tinker Skin. Why do I want to drop the Tinker Skin? So Tinker Skin is a really nice chest. There's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't feel broken. It feels like a balanced chest. I often use this example if anyone ever played a lot of card games. You don't want to put balanced cards in your deck. You want to put broken cards in your deck. Um, and I feel the same way about Tinkerskin. Like, nothing's really that broken about it. So I want to eventually replace it with a Eternity Shroud. Because I have an Eternity Shroud. So... I'm also thinking about maybe doing some setup with, like, shaped Call of the Brotherhoods. And going full conversion memes. I'm not sure. If not going for a Eternity Shroud... I'd be quite happy just running um, a well-crafted crit rare with a couple of mods on there. But I'm not that crazy on the Tinker Skin anymore. The main reason I was running it originally was for the uh, life and ES recovery. 
but since I'm making my build much more life focused, ouch. Um, yeah, less need for it. Another decent option, if I could roll a good enough pair of gloves, I could make a pseudo six link pair of gloves um, if I hit the right amount of mods and I could then drop the tank skin and run a cones. Uh, this build doesn't have that many gem sockets that you realistically need. A lot of the gem stuff is very fluffy. Um, I'm currently messing around with a Val Storm Pool Trap for additional single target. It's okay. Val RF would be better. I'm just trying to have some fun. I've tried Lightning Spire Traps. Lightning Trap Spats, honestly. Lightning, tra Lightning Spire Trap really isn't that great on a trapper. It just doesn't feel that good. With the plus one trap gloves uh, messing up the targeting on it, it just feels really inconsistent, and I nearly always feel like I'd just be better off just throwing more lightning trap. Um, so, yeah, I, I just don't really like that. So I'm kind of at the point now with this character where it's just like real end gamey crafting stuff. So that's it's kind of cool. It's a little tedious. Um, I'm level 92. I've done all the stuff that I want to do on it, so I might maybe take a little break from the character for a bit. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I still really want to play Earthquake. Like, I really, really want to play Earthquake. The problem with Earthquake is I would w want to craft a Fortify weapon, and I want to just farm currency for this build. <laughs> so basically, I want to play something a little bit different, so I don't, like, burn out. But I don't want to put any currency into it, so that's a bit of a mm, question mark. Um, I might just go back to farming low tier monoliths because that's the best source of alterations. And uh, also just throwing it out there, I've spoken in the past about really wanting to make an alteration div card. I'm a hundred percent making an alteration div card. I actually have a div card um, like pack, so I can make it whenever I decide on a theme. I'm making a twenty alt div card. Alterations are the best currency in Path of Exile. We need a way to farm alterations, which is less obnoxious. I've got you boys. Uh, I don't know when it will be put into the game, but I'm going to do it. So maybe like 20 leagues from now, when they finally get round to it, there'll be a 20 alt div card, and then someone will make a... They'll somehow increase the stack size, and someone will make like a 40 alt div card, and my one will be trash, but anyway. Uh, yeah, alt alts are important. I kind of lost my entire train of thought here. But uh, yeah, I know, I'm enjoying the build. Uh, people keep asking me, like, the more you've played it, how does it compare to Saboteur? Sab is more damage. Um, if you want to instantly phase bosses, then go Sab over going Scion. But if you want to instantly phase bosses, you can just do elemental to chaos conversion tricks. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd much rather be tankier and play this uh, Scion. Um, for hardcore, um, I would say that Sab will have a much easier time leveling, but a well-geared Scion uh, will be the much tankier option for Hardcore. So, yeah, for the Hardcore people, like, oh, I, I want to maybe play this build, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys have any cool suggestions on builds I could play, which, like, don't require any alterations being spent. Also, if you guys have any particularly cool, like, alteration farming strats, I'd be very into that. Uh, let's just run another Guardian, because why not? Um, did I actually get any Sulfite? I swear I put a Nico Scarab in there. I feel like I didn't get any Sulfite from that. I'm also trying to delve a lot more. So I've just been, like, spamming, um, spamming a lot of Scarabs, because I'm trying to push delve. I have a really big issue... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if anyone else is having this problem. I've got a lot of fossils. <laughs> I'm kind of struggling a little bit on the Resonator front. Um, I feel like if and when Legion goes core, I would really enjoy if they boosted uh, Resonator drops. Either give us way more Resonators from Delve or have it so that Resonators get added to the loot table. Uh, because I'm sure quite a few people are in a situation like, I've got all these fossils. I haven't got the things that let me use the fossils. Uh, which seems like, um, I don't know, I, I always kind of felt like resonators were a, a weird item in the first place. Um, like, it kind of makes sense why we need them, so that we can stack fossils on top of each other. But I kind of feel like we should just be able to use, like, I feel like they should delete the one socket resonators and let us just use fossils one at a time on items. That would be a nice change. 
and then resonators are just there for stacking multiple fossils. I feel like that would make sense and would make it a much nicer mechanic overall. I don't know. But, um, mm. Otherwise, though, I don't have too much more I really want to say about this character, so I'm just going to be sort of rambling. Uh, I did try out Shock Nova Traps. Um, I'm leveling a Shock Nova up. It's currently level 19 or something. Where is it? Yeah, level 19. Um, it's decent. The air is quite nice on it. I would need to get level 21 Shock Nova to do a fair comparison between Shock Nova and Lightning Trap. But since Maffle's Shock Nova character, then Camel Racing with Shock Nova, I've had quite a few people say, Taki, Shock Nova Traps, would you do it? Uh, one nice thing about Shock Nova Traps um, is you don't really leave any stragglers behind. And Sion actually gets 30% AoE. So it actually feels pretty good. Like, it feels nice. Um, the main real thing is, for super open maps, Lightning Trap is way better. But for a map like Phoenix, like this, uh, Shock Nova would feel way more consistent. Um, so that's just something to also maybe consider for anyone who wants to do that. And, uh... Oh, this is a... Fuck it. Let's spice up a bit. That was pretty disappointing, though. <laughs> you just get, like, zero fucking loot. Uh, one other thing I guess I could mention is... For super mobile bosses, this is where chain reaction... You're kind of like, oh, I wish I had chain reaction. Um, but otherwise, I don't miss chain reaction at all. And, um... The trap trigger thing hasn't been an issue. Running cluster trap hasn't been an issue. Some people have been saying, Taki, you can't run cluster trap on uh, Scion. It hasn't got enough trigger AOE. It's fine. It's honestly fine. If something's really, really fast, like just a super triple hasted whatever, zigzagging around, maybe. But I play in a hasted league, and uh, I've never had any issues with it. So, yeah, I don't know. Scion, Savator good build. Um, nothing wrong with it. I'm starting to get a little bit stale of it since I've played this character to 92 and I've also played it as a Sabo to 91. And I've done a lot of low level grinding on it. Because I've done so much low level grinding on it, I've played. it's more like having played it to like 95, if you know what I mean. Because I did a lot of tier 2 maps. But uh, anyway, I'm Taki. Build's great. Would recommend. Skill tree. If you feel like you've got too much life, drop this. Go this way, get more damage, take the damage nodes. Meek, meek, would recommend Unnatural Instinct if you have one. This is still a good one-pointer because of so much spell damage. Uh, one actually important thing, I swapped out my Watcher's Eye. Um, I was running a Zealotry Watcher's Eye and then I realised, thanks to someone in the YouTube comments, that it wasn't actually proccing because traps are not you. So I, I've swapped from Zealotry to Wrath and I now run a Penetration Watcher's Eye. You could also run a crit chance watcher's eye. Your ideal one would be like pen and crit while affected by wrath. Um, tempered flesh here gives a bunch of crit multi. See there, seventy percent crit multi. Uh, Mortal conviction, blood magic, so we can run our auras and we have no mana uh, reservations, which is very nice. Uh, and then I'm running a clear mind, which I will replace with a Maraketh jewel once I eventually hit a good one. Clear mind is still very nice if you have the points nearby. Um, would recommend. Meeks are not required. They just give life. Um, and in this case also int. But you can see that without both of the Meeks and uh, I've still got 6.6k life, dual wielding ones. So yeah, they're not mandatory to pay the build. They just give a bunch of extra stats. So yes, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Give me your build suggestions. By the way, bye bye